The Democrat-controlled House of Representatives yesterday passed a $15 per hour minimum wage bill. Now, the bill was passed after years of protest for what activists call a living wage. It's the fight for 15. However, it's unlikely to become law anytime soon. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has no plans to even bring the bill up in his chamber. And joining us now to talk about these economic hurdles and the possible ramifications for the economic expansion is David Grasso, spokesperson for GenBiz. Thank you so much for being here. Always great to be here. Have you ever heard the opposite of progress is Congress? Uh, uh, <laughs> I love that saying. All right. Well, let's, let's get right to it and see if we can make a, some progress in the conversation here. Uh, starting with the debt ceiling debate, talk about the ramifications here if Congress fails to raise the debt ceiling. Okay, well, it's looking good right now, right. not to panic anyone. Of course, the, the ramifications would be dire. You know, when the government runs out of money, they stop paying their debts. And the last time that happened in 2011, we lost our AAA credit score by one of the rating agencies, and that raises the cost of borrowing theoretically. Of course, this is the United States. It's one of the most stable countries financially in the world, but it would definitely tarnish our reputation. But just so people understand the debt ceiling, it's a very bizarre way we do things in Washington. We decide what we're going to spend, and later we figure out how we're going to pay for it. Okay? So true. You know, the, the, good thing, the good thing about this debate is, first, that we're actually talking about the national debt. But the, ba the bad thing, I think, that we're talking about raising the debt ceiling. Is, is that the, the solution here? Every time there's not enough money, just raise the debt Far ceiling. more. <laughs> well, you know, there's two ways of looking at this. So there's two schools of thought. One is the government is exactly like a household. You know, it shouldn't run in the red. But really, the demand for U.S. Treasuries and Treasuries from all developed countries like Germany, U.K., the United States, are in high demand. And it's a tool. It's a tool to be used for long-term investment. I'm kind of in between. I think our deficit is far too large, and neither party has meaningfully addressed the problem of out-of-control spending. Uh, President Trump today had made some comments that, uh, you know, he would hope that Democrats don't play politics with the debt ceiling. However, a couple of media outlets were very quick to point out that he was mm. doing just that back in 2012, where he was saying that he would hope that Republicans did use the debt ceiling as a negotiating point. Speaking of things, though, that <laughs> you don't play politics with, historically speaking, the president uh, has never until President Trump used the Federal Reserve. Uh, in, in, uh, or put the Federal Reserve in, in a, as a political target. And he's done that repeatedly here. Again, he's criticizing the New York Fed now for, uh, for, for not easing interest rates or for not putting pressure, I guess, on, on the central bank to ease interest rates. How do you see his role here? Okay, so let's talk about this. <laughs> this is a common misconception. Right. Every president has tried to meddle with the Fed. In fact, Reagan famously took Volcker aside and told him not to raise interest rates. Back then, there wasn't Twitter. Back then, we didn't have a president like Donald Trump. But every there was much more discretion, is what you're you were saying. But how does it, when, the, when the economy is doing great, credit goes to the president. When the economy is not doing so well, it's the Fed to blame. <laughs> You know, the economy is doing fairly well, and the Fed has a, a tough job to do. It's really hard to run the world's largest economy. And if they raise interest rates too fast, that's like pressing the brakes on the economy. Mm. If they don't raise them fast enough, it fuels inflation. So I do not envy their job. And it's very hard to understand when it is the right time to raise or lower interest rates. So we don't have much time, but I have to ask you, the House passed the bill that would raise the federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. Your thoughts? Yes well, or evidently, no? the Sanders campaign doesn't pay their own people $15. <laughs> dollars an hour, yes. which is a bombshell. You know, there's a lot of studies that conflict on this. What we've learned, especially from a study in Seattle, is that raising wages tends to produce a system of winners and losers, and it increases unemployment. So we have to be very careful with these prescriptions. Here in New York City, $15 an hour isn't a lot. In Wyoming or Montana, it's a lot of money. So that, I think, is better left to the states than the federal government. Congressional uh, Budget Office actually had argued, or they put forth the data, that if we see this $15 minimum wage, that it could result in 1.3 million fewer jobs. Absolutely. And we have to be really careful with these federal mandates that don't work for everyone across the country.